Producer addressed a Women's Month event billed as a celebration of strong women in society. Some of the speakers included the first black female fighter pilot, Mandi Samfeka. SABC reporter Bulelani Philip joins us now for more. Bulelani, a very good evening to you. What was the main thrust of the conversation? Well, uh, good evening to you, uh, Sapiso. It's a last day of Women's Month, uh, the 31st of August, and uh, we've been uh, engaging uh, in a lot of debates uh, surrounding issues that are affecting women. And uh, most of all is that uh, we've been graced here by the Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, Umama uh, uh, Utani Modise, as well as uh, ANC Women's League President Batabile Lamini, also attending this particular function. Of course, I'm just going to jump straight into it, Sepiso, and uh, bring in the Speaker of the National Assembly, Umama Eutani Motise. Memotise, last day of the Women's Month, and uh, of course, uh, you've got uh, a lot of uh, history, a lot of experience, and a lot of uh, personal experience around the issues of women abuse. Uh, your message on this last day? Uh, that it is not the last day. It is the beginnings of the fight back to reconquer the st streets, to reconquer our communities, to redeem our men and to redeem women and to ensure that future generations don't have to go through what we do. But it is also a day where we celebrate where we come from as South Africa. We have honored our mothers from Charlotte Maklaike, from Krotoa. We have honored even the young ones today Mandisa is the only fighter, female, black female fighter, that jet fighter that we have. We have also just on Atupopi for being in the only one who's in the civil aviation. It is important for women to conquer the skies. It is important for women to conquer the seas. It is important for us to inch our way into decision-making tables and to stay there. But to do so, we talk amongst ourselves as women, we remind ourselves that we will not stay there unless we revisit our ethics, our values, and the commitments that we have inherited from our foremothers to keep on keeping South Africa safe and proud. Again, this morning we woke up to the news of the death of the 19-year-old Uyine Nemkwejana. Of course, as the Parliament of South Africa, you have to say something with regards to that. As Parliament, as mothers of this country, as women, we really want to say to South African men, it is now enough. We are ashamed of having our children, even dreaming of good relationships, we are ashamed of us being involved with men who cannot stand up for their children, for their mothers, for their daughters. We want to say that um, this can continue. We want to say that South Africans must really have a rethink. We want to stand up and make sure that whatever happens, we must have children of both sexes who feel safe, who feel they have a future, who are not scared to go to school, who are not scared to go to parties. We want to make sure that South African men begin to remember Obamunna is not about intimidating others. It is not about forcing others. It is about being comfortable in your skin as a male, recognizing the feminine part of you and allowing women their own space to recognize themselves and to do that which they want to do. But we also must say that perhaps as women of the country, we must mobilize ourselves yet again like we did in the 90s, to take to the streets and to reclaim our lives and the lives of our daughters. It can't continue this thing. We can't send children to school and they disappear there. We can't do this. We cannot year after year be burying young women who are the future of our country. So this must stop.
Madam Speaker, turning to issues of the House, uh, of course, uh, the burning issue again is the proposal of the removal of the public protector. How far are we with that process and uh, how far is the Rules Committee in terms of dealing with the process? The Committee on Justice has reported back on how far they have deliberated on coming up with a mechanism for the removal. It is not just the removal of the public protector. That mechanism uh, will be about a mechanism and a process for the removal of all the heads of the Chapter 9 institutions. So that is what we have been working on. Um, we, as the uh, Rules Committee of the National Assembly, are now going to take over from the Justice and, and Constitutional Affairs Committee to now propose a process and the rules for the removal. We also are expecting um, a discussion, a report on the discussion on the letter I referred to the committee specifically that said uh, we must look at the possibilities of uh, removing the public project. So I make a distinction between the two things which were in front of the Justice Committee. One was to look at the mechanisms to remove the Chapter 9s and the other one was specific to the public project. All right, uh, lastly, Madam Speaker, the issue of the suspended Secretary to Parliament. In your budget vote, you did indicate that uh, in the beginning of August, uh, there has to be the final uh, heads of arguments that must be submitted. How far is that? Um, I received a notification from the uh, chairperson of the disciplinary committee yesterday. I have yet to discuss with the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces on the recommendations out of the disciplinary committee. We are very happy to announce that that matter has now been concluded and I'm sure very early next week we'll make the announcement on the findings of the DC. Is he staying or is he going? Um, until I discuss with um, the Timbasonto, I'm not saying, but there is a firm proposed, uh, recommendation on the table. Speaker of the National Assembly, Mayor Tandi Modise, of course, uh, giving us a rundown of uh, the closure of uh, Women's Month, uh, as well as some of the issues that are burning uh, in the National Assembly. On that note, Tsepiso will throw it back to you in studio.